the greatest artworks can stand the test of time. Today, I'll meet artist Amy Carl, who is using the latest technologies to make art that's expected to last forever. Welcome to Art and Technology. She's the future. It's Amy Carl. Hello. Hi, thank you for having me. Since season one, when you talk about biological materials to create art, how has your work evolved? Well, when the pandemic hit, the labs where I make my work closed. So I switched my tools. People weren't going to museums and I could reach so many more people by sharing my artwork online. And I'm thinking about where would I live and create if I was embodied to a machine? This would be online and in the metaverse. Can you list some of the technologies that you've worked with in the past up until now? I use exponential technologies to make my artwork. So this includes things like artificial intelligence, synthetic biology, machine learning, bioprinting, 3D printing, and now NFTs and going into Web3 in the metaverse. Wow. As our expert, Amy, I really need to know what these NFTs are. NFTs stand for non-fungible token. Non-fungible means that it's unique and it can't be replaced with something else. And it's stored on this immutable record, which is called the blockchain. So it can't be changed. Why should artists be excited about NFTs? There's a lot of opportunity that come with NFTs as a kind of digital certificate. It also makes it easier for artists to sell and trade directly to collectors. And how did you produce your NFT artwork, The Skulls? I was exploring how we may transcend the physical into the decentralized digital. And I made this skull collection, which is a series of digital artworks that I created from 3D scans of a human skull. I used an actual human skull and 3D scanned it. It exists on the blockchain, and I've also exhibited it in the metaverse. How has the appetite remained so strong to continue to innovate? I was born with a life-threatening birth defect, so I had a lot of experimental surgeries that were on the forefront of the cutting edge of medical technology. I really look at this time of humans merging with technology and biotechnology and what that means for us. But then we get into bionics and implants, bioengineering, and the boundaries of what is separate from the this artificial intelligence or what is us, what is human, really start to disappear. I'm currently working on what I call cyborg fashion sketches. Amazing. I'm envisioning this post-natural world when our bodies are altered by biotechnology and we live in these hybrid life web spaces. As someone completely new to your work, I discover Amy Carl. What do you want me to experience? My hope is that when you see my artwork, that you have some kind of emotional connection or emotional reaction to the work. That's when I feel like my artwork is, is successful. As somebody who always wants to be at the forefront of the newest technologies, what do you hope will be invented to help you explore as an artist? Right now, I spend a lot of time doing these mundane tasks that I could easily outsource to somebody else or to a robot. So I'm looking forward to a future where things are more fluid and we can focus on what's important to us. Can we stop being forever organizers, do you reckon? Have an easy to use technology that will be able to book our appointments for us. And clean our house and, um, yes. and, and really fundamentally though, help us live better lives, help us lead healthier lives, happier lives. Meta upon meta upon blocks and chains. Thank you so much, Amy Carl. I can't wait to speak to your guest in part two. Thank you for having me. How intriguing. NFTs allow artists to reach new levels of staying power through blockchain. In part two, I'll meet with Amy's guest, art curator, Christiana Ine Kimber Boyle, to talk about the latest NFT trends. Next on Art and Technology. Hyundai Motor. Connecting art and technology.